Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to continue working on our OBJ loader. In the last video, we set up the OBJ model class, and we can use this to load in a whole lot more data from the OBJ model. The problem is we don't have that data in a form that we can actually, you know, draw. So that's going to be our next goal. We're going to create a function in our OBJ model. It's going to be public. It's going to return an indexed model, our intermediate format. And it's going to be called to indexed model. And that's exactly what this is going to do. It's going to take our loaded set of OBJ da data and it's going to convert it into an indexed model. Actually, while I'm at it, I probably don't need the getters here, so I'm going to comment these out for the time being, and we'll see what happens. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start, actually, by creating an indexed model called result, which is just going to be a new indexed model. And at the end of the function, I'm going to return the result. So there we go. We got, well, we have an indexed model. We can't do much with it yet, but we have an indexed model. So let's actually go about converting it. Now, for the time being, I'm not going to go into any fancy mesh optimization. I'm just going to go through the very basic take our OBJ model data and get something that draws. And so that's really what I'm going to do. And here's how this is going to work. I'm going to go through the yeah, i equals 0. i is going to be less than... it's not called indices. It's called OBJ indices. I don't know it is called indices, it's just not showing up in intelligence for some reason. Okay, I'm going to go through everything in, in indices, and there. So I'm going to go through my big, gigantic list of indices. I have some OBJ index, going to call it current index, and it's going to equal indices.getI, which is great. I've got my current OBJ index. And now what I want to do is I want to get the related, well, position, texture coordinate, and whatnot, for that index. So vector 3f I'll call, you know, yeah, I'll call it current position. It's going to equal positions.get sub current index dot vertex index. Because that should be the index for the position. And that, that's great. Now I'm going to have more, two more. One for current text chord, which I'm not going to initialize yet. And one for current normal. And text chord is going to be 2f. These are going to be a little bit different. Here's why. I'm going to check if has text chords. If that is the case, then I'm going to assign the current text co coordinate to text chords dot get at current index dot text chord index. And if not, then I'm just going to say current text chord is going to be equal new vector 2f of 0, comma 0. If I spell right. There. I'm going to do the same sort of check with normals. Because again, OBJ models don't necessarily have texture coordinates or normals. So, do the same check except for normal. Very simple. And change this to get normal index, and change this to the list of normals. Okay, great. So now we've gone through every... So now we're going through every single index, and we're getting the related position, normal, and texture coordinate. So rather than doing any ridiculous mesh optimization or anything, all I'm going to do is pretty straightforward. I'm going to say results.getPositions I'm going to add current position to the list. And we we'll do the same thing for text chord normal. So dot get text chords is gonna add current text chord. And for gonna add current normal to normals. And yeah, and then I'll just I still have to add the indices. So I'll say indices dot add i because, well, that's, that's really what I'm doing. I'm sort of expanding out the indices and adding the relative 
position text coordinate normal like that. This, of course, will not generate an optimized mesh. In fact, we're probably even going to get some weird lighting effects if we actually try lighting this, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyways, this will get a mesh that draws, unless I screw this up somehow. And that's great. One final thing, though. In indexed model, I want to take... You know, no, no, never mind. I'll do that in a moment. For now, let's get rid of our old mesh loading code. And let's go ahead and let's do something with it. So right now we've loaded the test model. But what I actually want is the indexed model, call it model, and I'm going to import that. That's going to equal test dot two indexed model. So that's great. I got the OBJ model in the form of of an indexed model. But how do I convert it to a mesh? This is going to depend on how you want to represent your mesh internally. Since I'm doing it with vertex buffers, in fact, yeah, I can go ahead and do that here. I'm going to have array list of vertex and index just like before. And Actually, I don't even think I need the array list of indices. I think I just need array list of vertices. What I'm going to need to do is I'm going to say for i equals 0, i is less than model dot get positions dot size. Sure. It shouldn't matter. The positions, normals, and and what's it called? Positions, normals, and texture coordinates should be exactly the same size in the indexed model. If not, we've done something wrong. So this should be reliable. I'm just going to say vertices dot add. I'm going to add a new vertex. I'm going to take the sort of array of data and change it into the vertex data, which in this case is really, really easy. So it's going to get model dot get positions, get i, and same thing for yeah, almost right. One more. And this one's going to need to get normals.getI, and this is going to be get text scores.get I. And there. And really with that, I should just be able to call add vertices of Oh right, I have to actually convert it because this is Java. <laughs> Sorry, forgot. Now I want to actually convert the vertex data into a into arrays, which which I'm just going to copy my old code for that. So this, and for the index data, I'm just going to use the model dot indices because that should be com perfectly valid. Now, say model get indices to array, and finally, add vertices, vertices, and oh wait, vertex data and index data. No array lists involved, and I'm going to calculate the normals. I'm going to say that's true. And those aren't the parameters, are they? No, they look like the parameters. What? Oh, right. Because I need util to int array. Because boxing data and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Now, at this point, I should be loading a mesh. I'm not actually drawing it yet, but I should be loading it. This shouldn't crash. That, that's what I'm going for, again. And or, after this, we actually are going to try and get it to display. Okay, great. It's not crashing. So let's go to test game. And let's say, whoops, yeah. Let's use temp mesh for something. I'm going to have, OK, game object, I'll call it test mesh 3. <laughs> sure, I'm not being particularly creative, but hey. It's going to take in temp mesh and the material. And. Yeah, I'm just going to say add object temp mesh 3. Not even going to do anything. Er, test mesh 3, sorry. Not even going to do anything fancy about it. Just, just going to add it just like that. Now, if I build and run, I should at least see something. Uh, and look at that! We're loading the OBJ model. Now, again, it's not exactly working perfectly. I definitely say the <laughs> yeah the normals don't appear to be working right, which is actually okay. That's what I expected. That's sort of a side effect of the fact that we aren't loading it well completely properly yet. But hey, look, we got texture coordinates. 
we have some form of normal, even if it's obviously wrong. And well, yeah, we got a mesh. We're loading an OBJ model of our new system. And that's great, except it's not optimized for rendering. And, well, obviously the normals aren't loading, aren't generating correctly. In fact, the normals will never be generated correctly just by the nature <laughs> of the fact that we're trying to reconstruct the normals rather than actually exporting them with the model. But we can do it a lot better than this. So, yeah, now that we've got something working, let's take a step back and let's make a slightly more advanced algorithm for this. To start with, I'm going to move our calc normals function around. I'm going to leave it in mesh for the time being, just because I need it for when I'm not loading OBJ meshes. But eventually I'm going to move that completely into the index model. It's going to be public void calc normals. Not going to take anything in, it's just going to calculate the normals. All based on positions. Now, of course, this is going to need some slight bit of conversion because it's using array lists rather than arrays. So, one moment. This is not going to be that interesting. Okay, I went through and I changed all the array operators to array list operators. And, of course, I changed where it was using positions to positions. I've changed where it was using normals to normals. And, you know, technically this should be normals.size. Again, it shouldn't make a difference, but might as well. It's, I guess it's technically more proper. And yeah. So, for add vertices, I'm going to set this to false. And, right here, I'm going to say model.calcNormals before I convert it. And this should do mostly the same thing, except, well, now the calculation of normals is done on the model, rather than with the mesh. And there, we're still getting our really wonky normals, our flat shaded normals, but hey, we've still, you know, it's still working. But at this point, we're going to want to start optimizing the mesh, because that's going to sort of tackle two birds with one stone. You'll see what I mean. And the how mesh optimization actually works in concept is pretty simple. I'm going to do the naive implementation in this video, and then we'll discuss some of the issues with that in the next video. So here's the gist of mesh optimization. What I'm going to do is before I add all the positions, I'm going to go back through our list of indices, and I'm going to see if there's an index that already addresses the same position, texture, coordinate, and normal. If there is, then I'm just going to add that to the list of index. I'm going to add that to the index list because I already have a vertex that represents that information, and keep going. Otherwise, I'm going to add the new position, texture, coordinate, and normal, the new vertex data, and address that like I'm doing right here. So I think it makes more sense in code, so let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to do another form for j equals 0, j is less than i, and j++. Plus plus. And I'm, I'm going to have some int called previous vertex index, which is going to start off equal to negative 1. I'm going to... what I'm going to do here is something kind of like I'm doing here. I'm going to have some obj index, I'll call it old index, which equals indices.get j. And what I'm going to do here is quite straightforward. If my current index, dot vertex index, is equal to old index, dot vertex index, wait, okay, never mind, I thought I'd, yeah, never mind, I thought I'd done something weird, but never mind. That's me being paranoid. So, I'm going to see if that, that's equal to old vertex index, and the current text coordinate index is equal to the old text coordinate index and my current not text coordinate index, my current normal index is equal to the old normal index. If the, all these are true, then I have some pre-existing OBJ index that addresses the exact same stuff as, 
as, as my current one. So what I can do is I can say, first of all, let's make this into that. I can say previous vertex index equals j, and I can break out of there, because I found something else. Uh, for wise, it's just going to keep going and realize, hey, this is a new and unique vertex index. Now here's where the sort of optimization gets performed. If my previous vertex index is negative 1, that means there's no existing vertex, which already addresses the same position, texture, coordinate, normal, meaning I just do this. Otherwise, there is. And for indices, I'm going to just add my previous vertex index, because I already have some index that's, in, in theory, should be addressing this. And that's the just of mesh optimization. So let's run. Unless I screw this up somehow, this should produce an optimized mesh. Now it might take a while, <laughs> but it should produce an optimized mesh. Yeah, one moment. And I actually forgot part of this. It's not that this is wrong, at least I don't think it's wrong. It's just I forgot one part of it. And I think this is really best explained in the code, so I'm just going to start coding. I'm going to have a hash map of integer to integer, mapping some integer to integer. I'll call it index map. It's going to equal new hash map, integer to integer, and there. And what this is going to do is it's going to map these indices right here, the indices in the indexed model, to these indices, the OBJ index that they originated from. This also means that I can't just add i to add the proper index anymore because, well, there's not necessarily a one-to-one -one correspondence between obj index and, well, indexed model index. So I'm going to have some int I'll call current vertex index going to equal zero. And here I'm going to push back current vertex index and then increment it. So there. But what I'm also going to do is index map. I'm going to no, not insert. Put. Okay, apparently it's put in this language. <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm thinking of C++ or something. But anyways, so I'm going to put. And now it takes in two integers. I want to map i to current vertex index because i is going to be well the index for the obj index. It's also going to be the way I get this. And there. Now here, I'm not going to add the previous vertex index. I'm going to add the index map dot get with previous vertex index. And if all goes according to plan, that should get me whatever vertex index, well, this is from. And there, now this should run, and I'm going to go ahead and let it load up off screen, because, again, <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's loaded, and we now have our optimized mesh. As you see, now that it's optimized, it's got almost but not quite proper normals. <laughs> and, well, yay. <laughs> it's kind of neat in a way. Of course, the normals aren't quite working, as you see here from... See that, the blue light, the specular light that's sort of not crossing over the texture coordinate boundary? Yeah, that's a slight problem. And there's also the problem of this thing taking forever to load up. And this gets much, much worse with more complex meshes. This is, as you can probably tell from our double for loop, this is an n squared sort of time complexity. So, yeah, this is... Again, this works, it's just, this is not going to be the ideal way of doing things. It still hasn't solved the normal problem, and we have a performance problem. So we're going to start addressing those in the next video. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and in the next video, I hope you're ready, because we're going to start diving into the most complex code we've done in the entire series to avert these problems. And it's not going to be pretty. So hope you like algorithms, viewers, because 
we're going to face quite a bit of, yeah, quite a few of them head on. 